Hi and welcome to another very exciting tutorial. Today we are going to bring together two very amazing technologies, first of all Swift UI and Core Data. We are going to build this simple to-do list application. So what it does is uh, we can create to-dos like so, uh, maybe record tutorial, this is what I have to do today. Um, also create a thumbnail for the tutorial and so on. Uh, we can of course delete items when they're done and as you can see we get these nice animations. I actually also bought tomatoes already so let's also hit uh, the delete button right here. So this is what I have to do today. Well, um, the technologies that we're working with, as I said, is Core Data, which is Apple's um, data persistence framework, which is really cool if you have um, a lot of data that needs to be structured and you want an easy va a way to actually work with that data, depending on um, your requirements. This is going to be a great fit. And also, of course, you know, Swift UI, the new and declarative approach to build uh, better apps with less code. And now in this tutorial, we're going to bring together both things. Um, I have already some basic tutorials on Swift UI on my channel. So if you have never worked with Swift UI, go check them out. And also um, there are quite a few tutorials on core data. So if you have never worked with core data and you have never heard managed object context or persistent container or things like that, then um, maybe you want to check out these videos as well. So creating a new Xcode project, naming it maybe uh, core data to do. Uh, we also must make sure with this single view application template to use Swift UI and also use core data. Let's hit next, add that to my desktop. And um, using or setting these two checkboxes, of course, gives us the ability to use Swift UI with a basic content view already set up. And as for core data, we get our core data data model, where we still have to add some entities or one entity in our case. And in app delegate, we get a basic core data stack that we can work with. So this already helps us a lot. So maybe let's start with the data model. As you've seen, what we'd like to store are to do items. They do have a title and they have this created add attribute um, that we can use to see when we created this specific item. So in our data model here on the left, core data to do XC data model, we are going to press on the add entity button in the bottom area of the screen. And we're going to click on the entity and rename that to do item. Also, now we have to add some attributes, the properties of our entities. And here I'm going to add two attributes. The first one is going to be created add. The second one is going to be title. For the created add, we use the type date, which makes sense. And for the title, we will just use string. Now, what you can do um, to actually work with um, these entities is just let Xcode do all the work. And on the right in the attributes inspector, you can see that we actually can set the code generation to class definition to category and extension, and also manual and none. When we're working now with um, Swift UI, it definitely makes sense to set this to manual um, so that we are in control about how we use our entities. I will also set the module to the current product module um, just for everything to work nicely. And as I said, we're going to create our associated classes manually um, in a more traditional approach with a view controller based application. Um, you could also keep the code generation at automatic and just get your classes uh, right from Xcode. But we're going to create our own class for that. Um, so I'm going to select my content view here to place a new file right below. It's going to be a Swift file and we're going to call that to do item. Let's hit create. And as you can see, to do item actually matches the class name that is defined here 
in or for our entity we created in the data model. And now that we have our class or our file, we're going to import core data so that we can work with this framework. And then we'll define a public class right here, call it to do item, which is going to inherit from NS managed object because this is what we're going to be working with. And now to use it together with Swift UI, I'm going to also adopt identifiable so that each managed object is going to be identifiable uh, later when we're using it together with the list. Now for core data to be able to work with our class, we have to define our properties as NS managed with this property wrapper. I'm going to use public var created add, we have a date type here, and the second um, object and is managed. What we're going to use here is public var title, which is going to be a string. And then for simplicity's sake, we're also going to add an extension for to do item because we need to be able to fetch all of the elements that we have in our data. So we want to load all of our uh, of our to do items. I'm going to use a static function here so that we don't have to create an object of this class to actually use the get all to do items function. And what this is going to do is using an NS fetch request or returning an NS fetch request and we're returning a fetch request that works with to do item as a type. Now we just have to define the request, which is an NS fetch request for to do items. And then we can use a to do item, just get the fetch request and cast that to an NS fetch request that deals with to do item. And then what we can also do is maybe create a sort descriptor to actually sort our elements by the created add property or attribute. So and a sort descriptor, we initialize that with the key, which is just a name of our attribute or property created add. I want this to be ascending. And then we just have to use our request and um, pass along our sort descriptor and the sort descriptors property uh, within an array, because this is what is expected here for sort descriptors. It's also the plural form, so we have to use an array here. So let's now return this request. And with that, our data model is done and we've simplified our lives a little bit with this function that we can use very soon. And now we actually want to have access to our data in our content view. And for that, we need to access our managed object context, which actually is a part of our persistent container that is defined in our app delegate. Now, fortunately, there is a very easy way to actually get that. Um, and we have to do that now in our scene delegate. In the scene delegate, we initialize our content view, which is going to be passed as the root view to the hosting controller that is later displayed in the window. This is just how a uh, Swift UI works. So what we're going to do now after our window is declared, we're going to create a managed object context uh, constant here. And to access this, we can use UI application shared and access the delegate. So this would be app delegate, our class app delegate, but we still have to cast that to the proper name, which is, or to the proper class, which is app delegate. And now as part of our core data stack, we can use the persistent container. And within the persistent container, we have our view context, which is the managed object context that we're going to use. And now, since we want our content view to be able to work with this managed object context, I'm going to uh, define my content view here, initialize that, not good with content mode, but with content view. And then I'm going to set uh, an environment uh, key path here. Um, so first of all, the key path that we're going to use is um, managed object context and the value or the object that we want to pass along to the environment of our content view 
is going to be the managed object context that we just got from our app delegate. So just to uh, make this clear again, in app delegate, we have our persistent container definition and the managed object context is a property of the persistent container. So we're getting that right here using your application shared delegate. And then we um, pass that managed object context along to the contents view environment so that we can use that in a second. And now to initialize our UI hosting control controller with a root view, we do not initialize the content view right there, but we're passing along the content view object we just created. And now that we've done this preparation, we can switch to our content view, uh, where at the moment we're just displaying um, the text hello world if my can was is going to load to see that but um, it just takes time and you can imagine how this works so um, let's just uh, imagine that this would be displayed here and we want to work now with our managed object context uh, so uh, we're going to use inv a property wrapper called environment here to access the managed object context um, that we um, have pass along to uh, our content views environment and let's use variable managed object context right here to actually access that within our code here. And if you want to learn more about property wrappers, just check out the video that I've linked in the video description below um, because we're going to add yet another very handy property wrapper which I've discovered in the release notes of one of the newer Xcode beta versions which is fetched results and this um, or not fetch results uh, fetch request um, and this allows us to initialize a fetch request right here uh, which we get from our to-do item and the get all to-do items function that we have defined as a static function and now we can just uh, declare a property here called to-do items um, with the type fetched results of to-do item so that we can actually access all of our to-do items from our database um, and we don't have to perform any fetch requests or do anything. This is, a, this is a very handy way of actually accessing our data right here in Swift UI. So with these defined, what I will also do is use a state private variable new to-do item, which I'm initializing with an empty string. And using that state property wrapper, we can uh, very shortly use a, a text field um, to actually get the text or the string that the user enters in a second. But now let's really define our user interface. As you've seen, uh, we're having this nice looking navigation view. Um, that we can use here. So um, within our body, we're going to start with a navigation view. This navigation view is going to get um, a navigation bar title, which I'm going to add at the bottom, Nav but the code completion doesn't work if we don't add anything here. So let's just put some text here and then we can add a navigation view. Uh, title or navigation bar title is going to be a text and I'm going to say my list. This is going to be the title. What we'll also have is a navigation a bar item which is going to be on the right side of our view which is going to be a edit button to activate the editing feature. So this is what we're going to do with our navigation view. Let's now add some more things. As you've seen, we have a table view in this uh, navigation view. So we're using the list in Swift UI, and we also have multiple sections here. So how we have a what's next section and we have the actual to do's section. And we're going to start with the section with a header called um, with a text which is called what's next and then we're going to define the content of this section which is going to be a text field and a button as you can see here with this text field we have this plus button and we are going to do that 
within a horizontal stack. So we have the text field and then we have the button, so very simple. Uh, so let's define H stack here uh, with first of all our text field, uh, which is going to get the title uh, new item. And now um, we're going to use a binding or our binding to the new to do item so uh, that we always have an up to date version of what's inside our um, of our in our text field. So we have to use the dollar sign here new to do item to actually access the binding right here. And then the second element that we have in our H stack is going to be our button. And our button is going to have some action that we're going to define in a second. And we also have this uh, plus icon here. Um, so let me just remove this label stuff here. And let's add an image here, which is from the uh, system library or the SF symbols. Uh, so uh, I think this is the plus circle fill. So this is the SF symbols application that you can get from developers apple.com. And I'm now just going to copy the name here and initialize my image with that. What I also want is for this image um, to have a green color. And also I want the image scale to be large so that we can also see it. Now, this is actually all we need to do to define our first section. Maybe give the whole section a nice headline uh, font um, so that it looks a little bit better. And now we can give this a go and look at it uh, in the simulator, I know um, that SwiftUI actually is about not having to launch a simulator, but as soon as you introduce the fetch request property wrapper and do something with core data at the moment, it just crashes so, or the canvas crashes. So we have to rely on the simulator right here and we have our text field, we have our button. Uh, what we don't have is the uh, navigation bar title which is the case uh, because I've added it to the navigation view and not to the list. So let's quickly look at that again. Uh, so here we go. And here is our title. Here is the edit button. Um, and everything looks as we wanted it to be. Uh, now we can actually handle our action. And what we want to do here is actually quite simple. We want to create a to do item. So let's create a to to do item right here. Uh, we have to uh, initialize that with a managed object context. As you can see here, luckily we have one. So just using self managed object context. And now we have a nice object that we can work with. And uh, just as any other uh, class object that we have, and this is the beauty of core data that we can just work with ordinary objects. So uh, we have the title property and this is going to be self new to do item, which is bound to our text field. So we'll always have the content of our text field or the string in our text field in new to do item in this property. Then we also have the to do item and the created at property. Here we will just initialize that with a date object. And then we're already ready to actually save our managed object context. Um, something can go wrong here. So we use do try catch. So we try to use self the managed object context and we try to save that. We'll also catch possible errors by just printing them for the moment. And with that, we have actually everything we wanted. Uh, what we can still do is maybe reset the um, storage for our new uh, item, new to do item. So I'm using self new to do item. Just clean that. Um, so that we can just create the next item that we want. We can actually check that out now, see if uh, there occurs any error. So um, let's say uh, record tutorial. This is still something, tutorial is still something that I need to do. And uh, no error occurred, so I guess it's stored in our database. Let's find out actually in the next section 
of our list. So I'm just minimizing that here um, so that it gets a little cleaner. And let's create a new section with a new header, which is going to get a text as well. Um, and this is going to be to do's uh, right there. Okay, so and for the content of this section, we're using for each since we're already within a list. Um, and what we can do in for each is uh, very simple. We just use our to do items, uh, which is uh, just as a for in loop. Actually, we have all of our items stored in this fetch results object, and then we can iterate through these fetch results and get one to do item per iteration. Um, and we can now work with that and create a cell for our a table view or for our list. Uh, therefore, I've already prepared a little something. We could paste that struct um, right below, or we can also create a new file. Let's maybe do that again right below the content view. It's going to be a Swift UI view, and I'm going to call that to do item view. Let's hit create. And what I've prepared looks like this. So we just have two properties here, a title and a created at. And if uh, this works, uh, we could also take a look at that in a second. Uh, but it does not because there is an error in the other file. So um, let's maybe just add some comments right here, add a text right there. I'll quickly build that. Um, and then have a look at the to do item view. Let's try that again. And now build succeed. <laughs> and as you can see, um, you see nothing because I did not initialize that um, in the preview. So let's also initialize that right here. Uh, my great to do. Uh, I just write today right here because it's a string. And as you can see, this is what my table view cell is going to look like. Pretty standard. Um, nothing, uh, nothing fancy. So just uh, a horizontal stack um, with a, a vertical stack included um, for the text for for the two labels title and created at so very simple. Um, so let's head over again to our content view, where we surprisingly uh, do have um, no problems displaying this uh, this whole view, which is cool. Um, let's see if this is going to keep working in a second, but we still need uh, the space for the editor. So let's just work um, full screen with our code for now. And um, now for the for each section right here, what we'd like to do now is for each to do item that we get, we can initialize a to do item view. We could also just add the code I put in the to do item view right here. Uh, but I think it's just cleaner and it's the way uh, Swift UI is meant to be used. So uh, what I'm going to do is using my to do item and its title, um, which we have here, unwrap this, um, even if it's unsafe, but I feel lazy today. Uh, so please don't use that in your real application and don't force unwrap the to do item here. And for created ad, I'm just going to use a string here uh, with string interpolation again, using my to do item, access the created ad property and also force unwrap this right here. Now, the uh, amazing thing would be if this would work and we can see that in the canvas, but we cannot. So it says uh, the app crashed um, and we will have to look at that in the simulator. So here we go. And in the look at that, we have the to do item that I saved earlier. Um, let's maybe do another one. Uh, let's say buy butter. Uh, let's add that. And here we have buy butter. What we can do yet is delete something. So how do we go about that? Well, it's very simple in Swift UI because we just have to add the capability to each cell in our table view. Um, so we generate our list or our table view with for each right here. So what I can do is append an on delete. 
And what I want to do on the lead is uh, maybe just get rid of that. Uh, we can have or we can access an index set right here um, in this on delete function or in this on delete closure. And what we can do now is get a delete item using our to do items, our fetch results, and just access the proper item with the index set and the first element right here. And now we can use the managed object context, managed object context, and just delete the proper object, which we just named delete item. Now, after deleting the item, we also have to save. So let's again use do try self managed object context and just managed or managed. Why doesn't that work? Because I misspelled it. That's why. So let's scroll upwards and I'm just noticing it right now. Let's rename that and let's rename it managed object context. And now I should be able to use try self uh, managed object context and hit save. And if anything goes wrong, we're going to catch the error, print it right now. Also, not a good idea um, for your real application that you put in the App Store, but for this tutorial, it'll do. Uh, so now we should have the delete capabilities. Let's try that out as well and see if we can actually, I, I actually think I'm quite finished now. So maybe I want to delete, record tutorial, and that's done. Let's add another cool item and let's maybe hit edit and let's delete the butter and we can delete. So this seems to work. And as you can see, um, we just wrote about 64 lines of UI code and not really much um, on the uh, on the data model side as well. So I think a Swift UI kept its promise here and simplified a great deal for us here. Uh, if you compare it to using a fetch results controller, and all of the table view delegate methods that you would previously have used um, to achieve something similar. I think this is really an advantage. I think we've built quite an uh, interesting and cool little uh, to-do list application. So I hope you liked this video um, and you find a way to use core data and Swift UI together in a future project. So make sure to hit the like button if you found this useful. Don't forget to subscribe if you don't want to miss any future tutorials. I thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.